Hi, we are going to talk about how to find distance traveled by an object that's moving along a straight line, either vertical or horizontal. And this is something that we call the rectilinear motion. So when you have problems like this, uh, how do you do this? Uh, we're going to differentiate the position function to find the velocity function. And then we're going to set the velocity function equal to zero to find what, what times the object is at rest. And we're going to use sign chart to determine uh, where the object is at rest. Um, and we're going to find at which point is sign of the velocity function is going to change and that's where the object is going to change direction. Remember sign change for the position is the direction change for the object. And uh, then we're going to find positions at the endpoints and each point where the object changes direction. And then we're going to change define the position between all the points and to calculate positive differences and then finally we are going to add the distances traveled to get the total distance traveled. Okay, so here's our first example. We've got the object whose position is given by this uh, x of t equals 3x plus 1. Uh, the distance traveled on the interval from x to, from 1 to 4. So the velocity function here is going to be the, the, the derivative of the position function, which is going to be 3. So it's always positive, which, which means this object does not, change, does not change direction. It's always going to travel in the same direction. Okay. So then the, what, what we do, we're going to find x of 1, which is 4. We're going to find x of 4, which is 13. And uh, we're just going to use uh, the absolute value, so we don't have to think too hard about which value is higher. So if to find the distance here, I'm going to do the absolute value of the change in the position. And that's going to give us 9. Next problem. Particle whose position is given by this, so now it's moving along the y-axis. So we're going to find the velocity function which is going to be the first derivative of the position which is negative 5 again it's negative which means it does not change direction it does not change direction I should probably write the same thing here For the object to change direction, uh, the velocity must be zero and change sign. It doesn't happen here, okay? So in this case, we're going to on the, we're using interval from two to six. So y of two is going to be negative six, right? Y of six is going to be negative twenty-six. To find the distance in this case, we're going to do the absolute value of one position minus another position, and that's going to give us 20. Again, remember, we're using the absolute value just so that we don't get a negative number. All right. Moving on. So now we have situations where things get a little different. This is the position function t squared minus 4t plus 3. And find the distance traveled in this interval. All right, so we're going to do v of t, which is going to be 2t minus 4, right? And we're going to set it equal to 0, and we're going to find that t equals 2. So at 2, the object is at rest. That does not mean the object changes direction. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a number line with the same chart. So 2. So what is the sign of this expression to the left of 2? It's going to be negative. And to the right of 2, this is going to be positive. So the object is moving to the left here and to the right here. It changes direction at uh, t equals 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to find the position of this object at 1, which is going to be 0. Position of this object at 2, which is going to be negative 1. 
and also position of this object at 5 which is another endpoint and that's going to be 8. So for these two points the distance traveled is going to be 0 minus negative 1 take the absolute value is going to be 1. For these two points distance travel is called d1 d2 distance can be negative 1 minus 8 which is going to be 9. Total distance traveled is going to be 1 plus 9, which is 10. All right. Next example, moving along the y-axis. This is the position function. So to find the velocity function, we differentiate that. This is 8 minus 2t. So if you set it equal to 0, that's going to be t equals 4. And we need to see if there is sign change at 4. So when you determine that, you're going to substitute 4 into the uh, velocity function. So when t is less than 4, this expression here is going to be positive, And here is going to be negative. So that means the object is moving up here and moving down here. So there is a, a sign change, which means there is a change in direction. Okay. So y of 2, one of the endpoints, is going to be 13. Substitute this in here. y of 4 is going to be 17 and y of 6 is going to be 13 again. So the distance traveled here is going to be the absolute value 13 minus 17 which is 4. The distance traveled here is going to be the absolute value of 17 minus 13 which is also 4. And then the total distance, total distance traveled is going to be 4 plus 4, which is 8. There we go. So now we have this problem. The particle whose position is given by this cubic function is moving along the x-axis and we want to find the distance traveled on the interval from 0 to 5. So let's go ahead and do that. So maybe just like previous problems, we need to find the velocity function. So the velocity function here is going to be 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. If we factor out 3, we're getting t squared minus 4t plus 3, which you can factor. And that's going to give us 3 times t minus 1 times t minus 3. So if you set it equal to 0, you're going to get two points, t equals 1 and t equals 3. Now we need to see if there is sign change. We'll do number line. 1, 3. So you substitute 1 into this, you're going to get, well, actually, number less than 1. So this is negative, this is negative, it's going to be positive here. And then when you substitute the number between 1 and 3, you're going to get a negative sign, here you're going to get a positive sign. So there is a change of uh, direction at both points, moving along the x-axis. So here we're moving to the right, here we're moving to the left, and here we're moving to the right again. So the particle changes um, direction at both points here. So when or an interval from 0 to 5, so x of 0 is negative 6. x of 1 is going to be negative 2. x of 3 is going to be negative 6. And finally, x of 5 is going to be 14.
right? So what we do here, we will find the distance traveled here. It's d1, which is negative 6 minus negative 2. That's going to be 4. Between these two points, distance 2 is going to be negative 2 minus negative 6, which is also 4. And finally here, distance 3 is going to be the absolute value of negative 6 minus 14, which is going to give us positive 20. And the total distance traveled Total distance travel is going to be 4 plus 4 plus 20, which is going to be 28. Okay. So again, our process is, uh, I do have, I have one more example. Our process is we're going to need to see if the particle changes the direction. If it does, we're going to find the position at each point, both endpoints and each point where it changes direction and then you calculate the distance traveled from one point to the next one um, by simply subtracting the positions and taking the absolute value of that to make sure it's positive not negative and that's it okay our last example so this particle here is moving along the y-axis we need to find the position on this interval so first of all, the velocity function is going to be 3t squared minus 6t plus 3, which we can factor out 3, we get t squared minus 2t plus 1, which is going to be 3 times t minus 1 squared. So the particle is going to be at rest wherever the velocity is 0, which means it's at t equals 1. Sign chart. One. Here's what's going to happen here. The particle is going to keep moving in the same direction from one point to the other. So there is no, since there is no sign change for the velocity at one, it's both positive here and positive here, then there will be no change in direction for the particle, and therefore we are going to only consider the endpoints. So y of zero is negative 2, y of 5 is going to be negative 37 so all we need to do is worry about these two points so the distance between these two points which is also going to be the distance traveled negative 2 minus negative 37 absolute value which is going to be 35 okay and that's all